be saved. Be saved, man. Amen. Amen. Well, blessed to be here tonight. Yeah. Thank God for rain. Yeah. Glad to see everybody out. Tonight. Glad to hear. Well, we got folks missing, but you're not missing. You're here. Right. Yeah. And I, I just, I, my prayer is on every service, but especially midweeks, God help somebody get some help. Help everybody that's here take help home with them. It's needful. <coughs> Take a look tonight when you leave. Take a look at what helped you and what you can take from tonight and go help somebody else. That's needful. Because I promise, there may be things said, things done tonight that you don't need now. You may need it later. But I promise there's people in your life that need what you got tonight. So turn the cup up. Let God help you. Let God help you. We'll get ready to pray together. Somebody got a prayer request tonight? Pray for Dad. Um, he, as far as his back pain, he's feeling a little better. The pain has now moved down um, into his leg and his foot. Um, but he also has an pneumonia now. Mom took him to the hospital the other night. He's been around a fever. Um, so please pray for him. Pray for Mom. I know she's really worried about him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? Pray for Sister Shirley, and I'd ask you to remember my family and her. Uh, like I say, we've got quite a bit of cancer, and uh, just pray for them. Yeah. Someone else? Jason, I'm at the church to continue to remember um, our fifth grade teacher, Bethany, who lost her husband um, last month. She Say this before we pray. I was looking, uh, a dear lady from Tennessee. You've heard me. Uh, uh, you've heard me talk about preacher Bob's habits here. He loved that man. He wrote my since 2004. Little preaching Catholic boy. Love him to death. Uh, lady put on Facebook a picture about 1980 something. I would say it's him and his wife and his three kids. And I, I told Faith, I said that was that was happier times. Of course, as some know, Pastor Preacher Bob, uh, he's lost two of the three of his kids. They passed away. One passed away in the late nineties. Uh, the other passed away in two thousand eleven. And uh, because of that, some, at least last I checked, some of his grandkids refused to talk to them because they've been coached that there's a curse. There's Bob and his wife are cursed people because if they weren't cursed. Their family wouldn't be dead. And I, I, told, I told Faith, I said, it still amazes me that their family responds to them like that and then still go on to Jesus. I, I, want, to, I want to remind you, and I, Bob has told me this different times when he's talked to me about the issues going on in his family. He would tell me things that were going on and then he'd tell me this. But boy, don't you ever doubt what God can do. Yeah. 
Amen. And there's so many needs, so many deep, deep needs in, in our church, so many deep needs in our, uh, in our personal lives. Don't you ever doubt. Don't you ever doubt what God can do. Uh, I want to encourage you. We're getting ready to pray. And that's one thing everybody in this house can do. Everybody can pray. I would guarantee you, you parents, these little ones, you've even seen your little ones pray. Caitlin sent me a text Monday. Uh, Hudson went to daycare with his Bible ready to preach with it. You can pray. You can pray. Let's gather in if you would. Preach to Josh. Lead us forward in prayer. For his name was spread abroad, 
speaking of Jesus, obviously, that John the Baptist, and he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do shew forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias, and others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John, it is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake. Herodias is his brother Philip's wife, for he married her. He had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter uh, of the said Herodias came and danced and pleased Herod, and them that sat with him, the king asked, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever that she would ask, I'll give it to thee unto the half of my kingdom, up unto the half of my kingdom. And she went to her mother and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? What should I ask for of the king? What should I ask of Herod? And there's no stutter. There's no thought. It's an immediate response. And she said, the head of John the Baptist, and she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will thou give me by and by in the charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry, yet for his own sake and for their sakes, which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head be brought. And when he went and beheaded him into prison and brought his head in a charger and gave it to the damsel. And the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb. That's the reading of God's word. You can be seated if you would. I would love to give this title, and don't, don't hate me for the title. This is what's on the soul, and we'll explain it better in just a moment. Don't ask hurt mama. Don't ask hurt mama. Isn't that? Yeah. Sounds good to me, don't you? Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say this. I, there's sometimes I'm interested uh, in things that are between the lines and some things that are more history-based. Um, John the Baptist was buried. His body was buried, but his head, according to history, was not buried with him. Uh, Herodias' daughter takes the head of John the Baptist, gives it back to her mother. According to what we can research, John the Baptist's head was buried in a dung heap. I don't need to spell that out. Right. I, I, I want to say this. Uh, and I pray it's well received. Don't ask hurt mama as the title, but you could easily change it and say, hurt, what should I do? Bitterness, what is your advice? Vengeful, revenge, what do you think I should do? Now, we got to be honest here. There's some messed up stuff in this story. John the Baptist went to uh, Herod and stood against him. And Herod respected that to some extent. Herod had a desire for his sister-in-law. Herodias had a desire for her. Unholy desire. And John the Baptist withstood Herod and said, It's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't go silent on the good stuff. That's right. But can I say this to you? The messed up part, I would have understood if Herod would have got upset. 
upset about this. I understand that. Because you've got a man that is calling you out on something embarrassing. You've got a man that's calling you out on something immature. You've got a man, and not just a man, you've got the preacher man. You've got the preacher man that's calling you out on an immature desire. And yet, from what we can read in Matthew 14 and Mark 6, Herod had respect of that because he knew he was a holy man and a man that was observed and respected. But he goes to Philip's wife, who is Herodias, and because she denied him, he denied her an affair, Herodias got upset about that. Everybody with me? Everybody good? Yeah. I find that messed up. This man just, just barred you from pain. This man just stood in the way of breaking your home up, but not just breaking your home up, but breaking your kingdom up. This, this man has stood for your marriage. And the only thing that you could do with that is get mad and have a quarrel against the man that stood for you. I, I want to remind us tonight, at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do. Can I, can I say something very blunt, and this won't be the, the tone and tune of the message tonight. You and I are one step away. Lord, please help me say this. You and I are one step away from stupid. You and I, and, and I, I'll never forget this. Preacher Larry Waters down Muncie, Pastor, Ma uh, not Macedonia, Westside Baptist Church off Cornbread Road. There was an incident that happened about 2014 last, uh, 2014 years ago. And Pastor Larry stood in the altar of his church and he said, there's times that we are bad to look at people that have done heinous crimes and say, I would never do something like that. I would never do something like that. I would never stoop to that low. Psalms 40 gave us this, that innumerable evils have compassed us about. And the only thing that keeps us from the heinous, the only thing that keeps us from criminal, the only thing that keeps us from ruining ourselves is Almighty God. That is it. And I'll say it one more time. I know it's an offensive word. I'm only going to say it one more time and we're done for the night. The only thing that keeps us from stupid is an almighty God. Yeah. That's it. But even when, when you take a look at what, a, what an almighty God can do, I, I, I've got to ask you, I believe he's all powerful, don't you? But Psalms 48 would tell us this, that Israel committed a horrible sin. They limited the Holy One of Israel. What, what, what does that mean? I, I've got to ask you, if I'm looking just at what God wants, if God got His perfect way, are there more or less people here tonight? Is that right? God gets His way on Sunday morning. Is every church house half empty or are they full and running over? Well, Chase, God's Almighty. God gets what He wants all the time. That's not true. Because if God got what He wanted, hell would be empty. Do you have Bible for that? Absolutely I do. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. At the end of the day, you and I have to admit this. You and I, we make choices that disappoint our employer, disappoint our employees, that disappoint our community. We make choices that disappoint our families. We make choices that disappoint our God. And it's not because we were made to. It's because we chose to. And can we hallelujah in something right here? We ought to hallelujah that 
that we not have the opportunity at times to make the big mistakes. This is perfect time, perfect place, perfect situation. Chase, do you believe God opens doors? I believe God opens doors. Do I believe the devil opens doors? I believe the devil opens doors. Well, what do you call this? This is the devil opening a perfect door. A perfect door. Let me just go a little further and some things that are messed up. I want to remind you, Herod is eyeballing his brother's wife. Herodias' daughter would be his niece. Is that right? Herod has a birthday party. Herodias' daughter comes to dance for the birthday party. All these men, all these adult men were well pleased at her dancing. The, the scripture quote is, it pleased them. Not that they were pleased, but that it pleased them. I don't need to dig deeper than that. That's what it says. Is that right? right. One man was more pleased than the rest. It was Herod. Well, you're diving into some of this. I, I, hey, I want to let you know, there's times you and I don't think that God can dive as deep as our mind. Chase, God doesn't know how dark I can get. God, God doesn't realize. Can, can we admit some things? There's times that we have thoughts that we wouldn't want anybody to know about. Your spouse can't reach you. Your kids can't reach you. Your best friend can't reach you. But I promise you, God is still there. Ah, we all the hallelujah there. It might not be worth much Halloween night, but man, Sunday morning would be worth it. When you realize that you have a God that from the lowest of the lows, when you are the person in that moment, that man, it's been years since you've been that. When you're the person in that moment that you've never, I know I'm talking about negatives, but when, when, when you are considering things, Hey, can we amen something right here? There's times it's not so much scary what we've done as scary what we consider doing. Because in that moment of consideration, the devil is starting to crack open the door. And then God comes through with reason. Come now and let us Reason together. God says, all right, and, and, and can, I, can I give you, how many of you will agree with me, there's times people can get so low, you don't need to talk to them. There's a, there's a boy off the top of my head in jail right now. Nobody needs to talk to him. He's dying for that negative attention. Dying for it. And coming and seeing him in a place of low is what he wants. But aren't you glad of this when it doesn't make sense for your spouse to talk to you and it doesn't make sense for those closest to talk to you because they're scared of you because they don't know what to say. They don't know the right words. Aren't you glad you've got a God that's never afraid to talk to you? All right. I, I have to admit, there's been times I've considered things that I'm not a bit proud of. Didn't do it. Hey, can I, can I give us this? Be careful being too proud that you didn't do what you considered. Why, Chase, we, we can think all we want. Thinking won't get us in no trouble. Pile enough bricks up, and you'll be able to reach whatever you want to reach.
So Herodias' daughter does such a wonderful job, and we're getting closer to the meet we'll be done tonight. And, and by the way, can I throw something in? How many of you all know people that you can see their wheels turning when they're turning? There's an old saying used to go like this, there's smoke coming out your ears. Those wheels are going. There's a problem here. There's Herod and Herodias. And there's Herod's daughter. I'm sorry, Herodias' daughter. I, I want to beg you this. When you are in the time, I'm talking to an individual, when you are in the time that things are starting to become considered that should not be considered, before you go under, reach out to somebody. Am I, am I good talking to us as human beings? Not. But can I also talk to the other person? When you are the person that you can see, there are things that are starting to be considered. Chase, how dark are we talking? I'm not talking pitch black. But we've been looking so much at sobriety the past few weeks. I'm talking when they're starting to be unsober things starting to be considered. And you can see that happening in your spouse's eyes. You can see that happening in your friend's eyes. You can see it happening in your family. You can see it happening in the church. See something, say something. Well, Chase, at best, this is, we're, we're talking about a king here. We, I know we're talking about a man, but something else was sitting on the throne. Isaiah 6, can somebody help me quote this? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Anybody talk to him? Anybody remember what Uzziah's problem was, what his sin was? Pride. Right. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22. The books of the Chronicles worry me so much. And you Bible readers, these folks in this room, you've been a Bible reader now. The Chronicles worry me so much because it's almost like every chapter. And he was 16 years old when he sat upon the throne. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord until... 26 years old was this one when he sat upon the throne. And he did that which was right in the eyes of his father David until. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord until. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord until. i, I got to ask you and I a question. How much are we doing to stop an until from happening in people we love lives? Isaiah 6 is not the story of King Uzziah. Isaiah 6 is the story of King Pride. I gotta wonder how many kings need to die in the mind of your lives. Hey, at the end of the day, John the Baptist is a peasant. Herod's king. He's going to do what he's going to do. At the end of the day, when someone lets something that's ill, something poisonous, something unsober, when they let that get in the driver's seat, shut the door, lock the door. That car ain't going. You can bust out the windshield. You can bust out the window. But that car goes 80 miles an hour. You ain't catching it. I got to wonder, and, and mind of your minds go to the darkest, but don't go to the darkest with me. Go, go to every shade of gray with me. How many people do you think have sat back and watched unsober decisions happen? Ill decisions happen. 
and sat back and watched those people make those decisions and said this, what could I have done? Could I have done more? It wasn't John the Baptist that looked at Herodias' dog. It wasn't John the Baptist that looked at Herodias' dog. Whatever, whatever king says you want, you name it. It wasn't any of the kingsmen that said, hey, whatever he asked, when he, he's going to ask you whatever you want. It was the king. It was the king. You and I have got to take a look and be sober when people, and this is difficult for me, it's difficult for you. I do not believe that God sends everything, but I do believe God allows. There's people in this church, things have happened, and why did God do that? I think we forget sometimes we do have adversaries. Jesus, and we'll, we'll get ready to dive in. We'll be done. Jesus is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, not waiting on coronation day. He is that. Yeah, but don't you forget, Satan is the prince and the power of the air. All right, let's dive in. A little short. Yep. 724. She dances, does a good job of dancing. And goes, and Herod approaches her. Hey, can I ask a human question? Don't go historical on me, go human with me. There's a bunch of men watching her dance. If you're sober, do you look at her and say, good job? Or do you say you need to leave? But there was something in him that was already considering breaking up a marriage. When your consideration is 120 miles left, that's, your, that's as far as you'll go. It's 120 left. Why in the world would 50 left be a problem? What do, you, what do you want, baby girl? She can have anything up to the half of the kingdom. Solomon could have had anything. When you've got a billionaire ready to write you a check, you name it, you got it. God owns cattle, thousand hills, young hills too. God got a pen in hand. And Solomon looks at him, could have asked for humans, could have asked for women, could have asked for riches, could have asked for anything. And Solomon says, I want the discernment to know between right and wrong. And it paid off. Why? The very next day, two women come with a baby in hand. If Herod would have sought out the same thing when Herodias' daughter comes up to dance and Herod in his temptation, in his moment of consideration, the gospel came to him and said, man, you're considering things that you shouldn't be considering. And it happens to all of us. We consider things that wasn't God's plan. We consider things that wouldn't be best for our, our family, wouldn't be best for us professionally, wouldn't be best for us personally. And the gospel came, Jesus came, and said, this is not it. Herod could have reacted so differently to that. And you want to know what would have happened the very next day? Herodias' daughter come up. And she ready to shake what her mama gave her. And Herod stands up and says, honey, go home. Go home. 
Every day, you and I are faced with two types of sober advice. We're either faced with sober advice from Jesus or people representing Jesus. And don't you doubt it. That will go into effect immediately. Immediately. Little girl goes to her BFF. I'm sorry, it's not a little girl. She's, she's at least, according to ritual, she's at least 15, 17 years old. That girl goes best friend. Mom. Mom. Uncle Harry said I can have anything I want. I can have half of this kingdom. He could pay for my schooling. He could pull us out of debt. He could do so much for us, Mom. What should I ask for? Can I give you something that you and I make the mistake of a million times out of a million? Going to someone we know is not sober here, either because of tragedies that have happened, because of betrayal that's happened, because of bitterness, because we, we know. And it, it's not just sober here because of happenings. There are money first time people. They're a get out of Indiana first time people. Anybody there? They're a church's third, fourth, or fifth type of people. Hey, I'm thinking of, I, there's this job that, I mean, I'll have to work about, about every Sunday, but I'll get to make Thursday, but I'll get to make 40 on the hour. And it's people, can I dive just a little bit right here? It's people that struggle making their bills but got enough money to either get smokes or lottery tickets. Yeah. Well, I mean, church will be there. Whenever you get out of your job, church will still be there. And God's not the bill, he's in your heart. So, so get, get them kids out and sacrifice them. They don't need no Jesus. You're the one that teaches them how to be a better human being. You are. <laughs> Going to someone that's hurt against the church and saying, hey, can I get some advice about my church problems? We got trouble at the harbor. I need your advice. And you went to somebody that doesn't come to the harbor because they don't want to be here. Yeah. Somebody that's burnt on marriage can't stand marriage because they're bitter about how their last two went, their last five went, their last eight went. I need some marriage. We're, we're, we're struggling. Here, God advise you. I wouldn't put up with that mess. You work all day and she don't respect you no more than that. He doesn't realize what you're, how good you are. He doesn't realize. I tell you what I've done. No. We go up to people at our jobs knowing good and well. They don't like the principal knowing well. They don't like the boss. I wish they hadn't done that. Hey, Mom. How come Uncle Harry's always calling you? How come you always want to go visit Uncle Harry without us? Are we there? Everybody good? Hey, Hurt. 
they hurt, they regret, they past experiences. Anybody there? Is that right? Hey, past experiences, here's my opportunity right now. What do you think I should do? Hey, regret, here's my open door. What do you think I should do? Hey, anxiety, hey, insecurity. Oh, here's an opportunity for my ego to get petted. Hey, ego. Ego, how you doing? I've been waiting forever for you to come back to me. I knew you couldn't live without my I knew you couldn't live without me. What do you think I said? Hey, pride? Shoot. You got John the Baptist saying you can't handle it. You need God. You know when too much is too much. You're, you, you control your family. You're a good man. You're a good woman. You, you've got your home together. You've got your life together. Hey, pride, what do you think I should do? And when you get burnt, when you get burnt, folks will remember the good that you used to do before you got burnt. But your head, you know where to be. People used to say, get your head out of the gutter. John the Baptist's head might have been in a dumb heap. But his head wasn't the one that smelled like dumb. That's facts. Hey, I, I, I gotta ask you, and I'm done. Thank you for your kind attention. Are you considering the source? Are you considering the source? I said it here a few weeks ago. There's times you and I, and I wish, I wish Herodias' daughter and her name fails me. Anybody got it? I can see it. Anyway, I wish Herodias' daughter would have took a step back. Your mom's her. She feels betrayed. And can I just tell you where she really, really was? And you can agree or disagree because there's nothing in the book about it. She's embarrassed. Take a step back. Take his head off. How many of you would agree that embarrassment will make you say some things? Shame will make you say some things. Agitation, frustration. They times you live in all the nation of frustration. Who we want to listen to. Out 
know if I believe that or not. I know some folks that believe Fox News is as good as the gospel. Ain't no need watching TV in. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Ain't no need getting on Soul Harbor's YouTube. If you want to hear gospel, it's Fox News. Don't listen to C-SPAN, all that other news outlet. Mm -mm. What? Have we went back 50 years and you only got one channel at Fox? <laughs> you choose what you listen to. You choose who you listen to. Hey, I, I'll raise my hand. How many of you talk to pretty much the same amount of people every week? Yeah. Is that because there's nobody left on the planet? I'll even dial it a little closer. How many of y'all call the exact same people every day? What? There's nobody on your contact list? It's just those? It's a choice. What are you saying? If you are one of the people that gets called every day, you're one of the people that people always reach out to when they're in trouble, they always come to you. They got hardship, always come to you. They need you. You know what your weight is? W-E-I-G-A-T. You know what your weight is? Your weight is to stay sober. Because you one step away from stupid. And when you take that step, that's the advice you're given. And i got to wonder the ripple effect. The ripple effect. When Herodias looks at her daughter. You know what I've been so deep? Chase, while we stand, if you still preach, it helps me wrap it helps me crap up. You know what would have been so deep? She says, kill him. And then she says, hey, 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 hey. I'm not the place to give you advice. I'm sorry for what I just said. Go ask anybody else. It'd been better you got advice from your dog. And what if, what if you're the person that always does the calling? What if you're the person that always makes the choice of who you reach out to? Chase, I believe these aren't the best people to reach out to. Then you need to know how to disclaim that. What do you mean? There's times I'll call Rob, and I, I mean this well. Time to call him. Time to call away our, our folks. And I'll say, hey, I don't need a friend. I don't, need, I don't need a politician. I need a deacon. A friend of mine, a pastor, called the other night. And I just told him. He gave me his problem. I just said, I'm going to talk to you sober and not as your friend, not what you want to hear. Chase, my, my family's who I talk to then you need to realize these times they're going to come to baby girl, baby boy's needs. Dustin Coleman, say this to be done. Thank you for putting up with me. You, you stood for about two and a half now. Dustin Copeland, his dad Keith, he was here with us in the Bible probably back in a few months. Keith told me this. He said, you don't know, he'll watch this, you don't know how much I wish I could be a deacon for my boy. I would love to go to his church and be a deacon for him. Dustin has had some bad church situations. Not where he's at now. This has been candy compared to that. He said, but Chase, do you want to know why God won't let me and why I won't pray about it? Because if he ever got put in a troublesome situation, I don't know if I can hold back Dad just to be a beast. You and I need to separate from telling people what they want to hear and what they need to hear.
Anybody got anything tonight? I thank you for coming out. Looking forward to Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Looking real forward to it. Sunday night, we'll be back on YouTube. Thanksgiving meetings are coming up. Looking real forward to it. Any other announcements we got? It, man, I love y'all. Appreciate y'all coming out tonight. Hope you take away something from it. God bless you till Sunday morning. Go pray and come pray and rejoice in the